Hello, welcome to Warrington Parish Church, the Church of St. Elphin, on this Bible Sunday. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With all my heart I seek you, O God. With all our hearts we seek you. Blessed are you, Creator God, and blessed are those who learn your ways. I shall not forget your word. We will treasure your truth in our hearts. I do your will with great delight. We rejoice in your wisdom. With all my heart I seek you, O God. With all our hearts we seek you. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delights and I I will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in Jesus, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will Our confession. 
The Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. Let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Loving God, you have given us so much, your word to guide us, your love to heal us, your spirit to encourage us, and you have given us each other, so that in community we may embody your love in the world. But we confess that we often fail to live as your chosen and beloved people. Impatient and intolerant, we fail to see your presence in the other person. We hide precious truths which we hold in trust. We let the possibility of peace slip through our fingers. Loving and forgiving God, may we learn to forgive each other. May we be open to the transforming power of your love. May we be recreated as a people of peace. Amen. God forgive you. Christ renew you and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord is the good news announced to you. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I have a testimony that is greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life, I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another, and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I said? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Many years ago, it was thought that the Bible, being such a holy book and inspired by God, should only be read by those who were trained to understand, and that they would in turn instruct those who did not. Some believed that it should only be read in churches. Others believed that it should be read or heard in a language that people could understand, something we would count as obvious today. John Wycliffe and his team translated the Bible into English in the 1380s. It was written by hand. It was a dangerous thing to do, and those who did often suffered. Things have changed over the centuries, and now we can find various translations of the Bible, and of course many of us read it online using our phones or our tablets. This morning, as we celebrate Bible Sunday, I would like to encourage you 
to have the Bible take a more significant place in your life than maybe it is now. If you haven't got a Bible, I encourage you to get one. If you have one but don't read it, then I encourage you to read it, and so on. I will put some links on our Facebook page, which I hope might help. The Bible was never meant to be read like a typical book from page one and keep going until you get to the end. It is described as a two-edged sword. In fact, it describes itself as that, as living and active in the world and in the lives of the people who read it. The Bible is far more interested in transformation than in passing on information. I know that some of it is difficult to understand and sometimes we are meant to stay with the scriptures and to struggle with them. I know that different traditions in the church disagree about different meanings and passages in the Bible. We have to weigh things up, the culture of the time along the truths which will last forever, no matter the culture or the people. We have to make up our own minds and we often live with uncertainty and also growth. For example, Jesus never spoke about sexuality as such. It may be simplistic to say that he majored more on loving God and our neighbour as ourselves. However, those who want to judge sexuality in the light of the Bible often quote a verse in Leviticus. However, Leviticus also says that we should not wear a garment of two different materials. The Bible also tells us not to judge, not to bear a grudge ever. Neither shall we have any tattoos. And of course, we should never work on the Sabbath day. We cannot pick and choose, or if we do, we have to know why. And so we have to be careful when quoting Bible verses taken out of context. Yet the Bible contains so much light and so much help, but we will never know unless we read it. We can read it for study, and we can read it for devotion with prayer. There are many versions and we may need to take a look and see which we prefer. The Good News Bible is paraphrased and so is easy to read for most people. When studying, I had to use the new Revised Standard Version and I have used this for some 30 years now. The Church of England uses this version too. It is inclusive and went back to the original language when it was translated. You can read the Bible from a book or from your phone or iPod or your iPad or a tablet. You can read it at home, in bed, at the table, on a comfy chair when you're on the train, listening to the, in the car whilst walking the dog. There are many, many ways to now read the Bible and there are many aids to help us there are Bibles you can get where you can read the whole Bible in a year and set passages are given for each day. There are Bible reading notes where you read a portion of the Bible and then read someone's reflections on it. When people come to me and say they want to read the Bible, I always direct them to the Gospel of Mark because Mark is the shortest and therefore we get to know about Jesus Christ quickly and it is about Jesus Christ that as disciples of his that we would want to know more about. The Bible helps us to find Jesus. It is inspired by God and alongside of faith in Jesus it is useful for training in the ways of God. May it abide, dwell within each one of us richly. Amen.
the peace. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the blessed Mary, Elphin and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
our prayer after communion. Lord, may we continue to live in the truth, and may we know the scriptures. May that knowledge grant us wisdom that leads to salvation. Through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>